Okay, my name is Vlado Meller, and I'm a senior master engineer at Sony Music Studios. And I'm doing this work for the last 36 years, believe it or not. <laughs> I hate to sound like a name thrower, but I pretty much work with everybody and anybody. You could ask me who I didn't work with. That's probably easier. Yeah, everybody from Streisand to Celine to Red Hot Chili Peppers to Metallica to Kanye West, John Legend, Weezer, Puddle of Mud, I mean, you name it, I've done it. Each genre of music represents certain sound. The jazz people look for certain sound. The classical people look for certain sound. The heavy metal people go for a certain sound. The hip-hop people go for a certain sound. And that's where my experience comes in, really. I mean, I, I have a certain idea of what, what the record should sound like, and I play it for the producer or the, or the artist and see if they like it. And most of the time they like it. They just go with what I think is right. And again, it comes from the experience. I pretty much, I'm very blessed, and I realize that it's a beautiful job, and I enjoy it. I mean, I enjoy every minute of it, and... Um, I'm still doing it. And the variety, I enjoy the variety of the artists I work with because some, some engineers specialize in certain music. There are certain mastering engineers who do only hip-hop, certain mastering engineers do only heavy metal, rock. I was always open to the, the whole spectrum. And the reason that I was open to that because CBS had such a huge catalog, even in the 70s. They had a pop, they had jazz, they had classical. So I was open, always open to new ideas, and the clients just would come in, they, they would book the sessions. Uh, one day I would have uh, Miles Davis, next day I would work with uh, Leonard, Leonard Bernstein, you know, doing a classical recording they recorded uh, at the famous 38th Street studio that had uh, CBS as an ch old church, which used to be a recording studio. So I pretty much met them all. Well, mastering engineer is at the end of the whole recording process. Uh, you go to studio, you record the tracks, then you go to mixing, you mix the tracks down to two tracks, and after everything is done, after you got your songs, 17 different versions of each song, vocal up, vocal down, guitar up, guitar down, you come to mastering, and this is where the whole package is put together. I will take all these individual pieces, and they could be either on analog tapes, or on Pro Tools, or on digital audio tape, any format. You can bring anything you want, DVDs, audio CDs, digital data. And I'll enhance it over here to my ears or to producer's ears or whoever sits with me over here. But usually they trust my judgment. I'll make a final decision how the CD will sound. And then we transfer it to another system. In my case, it's the Sonic Solutions, which is a digital editing system. And that's why I combine a whole album together. I will do all the musical edits, all the fades, all the cross fades. So pretty much I assemble the whole CD. At the end of the session, which could be a day, two days, three days, month, it depends on the project, I make actually final audio CD. I'll burn the final CD. And that CD will go to a record label, it will go to producer, it will go to the artist, and upon approval, we ship to master. So I'm the last person in the chain, but it's the most critical person because this is where it's assembled really. In mixing, engineer only concentrates on indiv individual mixes, he really doesn't care how the whole album comes out because he could be doing just three songs, another guy would be doing another two songs. These days you could have four engineers and five producers on one album. But at the end of the day, the album has to sound like it came from one studio, one producer, one engineer. And this is where, where the mastering engineer comes in. So it's a very elaborate work. I mean, you can see when I started in 1969, mastering was pretty much two-track tape machine, quarter-inch, and a cutting lathe. We were cutting uh, lacquers, actually, for vinyl. And there was a little editing, not much. Pretty much once they delivered the master to mastering, it was already assembled, leadered. There were a little bit from the songs, two to three seconds. So the only thing you had to do is transfer the tape into a vinyl, which was also pretty critical work, but you couldn't change very much. I couldn't change the frequencies, I couldn't change the sound. It was pretty much set already at the studio with the producer and the engineer. These days, when the master comes in, it comes in pieces. I mean, you can look at these boxes over there, <laughs> that represents one album. Yeah, probably 30 reels of tapes. You get dozens of uh, DVD Pro Tools files, d digital data files. And we take all the elements for each song, the best elements, best vocal, best bridge, best intro, and we put it together.
So pretty much assemble, actually. We assemble the song right here in mastering. Well, as you can see over here, it's pretty elaborate setup. I have analog EQs, I have a digital EQ, I have a digital compressor, I have an analog compressor. And you apply all these EQs and compressors depending on what type of music you're doing, really. I mean, if I'm doing a jazz or a classical album, obviously, I still enhance it, but I, I don't go all the way with the sound because classical or jazz people like it a little bit softer, a little bit more dynamic. When you do a rap record, it has to be in your face as loud as possible, so the compression is heavier, the EQ is heavier. When it comes to classical music, it's very gentle. It's again, everything is enhanced. There's no tape which comes out from this room sounds exactly the way it came from the studio. It's always a little bit better. And uh, depending on what the producer wants or what the artist wants, this is where I come in and I do the old magic over here. Well, today's technology allows them to do pretty much everything at home. But when it comes to mastering, you have to rely on some established person who knows what they're doing because uh, all these digital workstations have certain programs where you can pre-master the program, but it doesn't, doesn't mean that it's actually mastered the way you want to be, uh, you want to deliver it to a record company or, or present it to the public. It, again, that, that's where experience comes in. Uh, one little button, Pro Tools uh, or Finalizer, won't do actual mastering, even though it's called pre-mastering or finalizing. So you, you really have to know what you're doing, and you have to know the limit, how far you can go with your EQs or compression. And that's again where the mastering experience comes in. Because I know what the final outcome will be once it goes to pressing to actual CDs, uh, commercial CDs. And we know the limit. We know what can be out, what can be played outside. I mean, at home you can make it even louder than possibly you could play it at home on your home system. So there's a limit to, to what you can do with the level, with the EQ, with the compression. And all these things, you really, you can learn only on the job. That there's, there's no school for that or anything. I mean, I learned, when I started, I was very inexperienced. I was into music. I play, I play violin and piano. I studied classical music and also electrical engineering. So I had two basic skills which are good for recording, but I had no clue about mastering, no clue about mixing or anything. I pretty much learned on the job. Each year I got more and more knowledge, you know, when I started, I started to work with classical records, CBS was very heavy into classical music. When I started in 1969, they had a huge catalog, plus they were recording Broadway shows, so I was cutting actual classical albums. Then we did lots of uh, jazz, Miles Davis, he was on CBS records, Dexter Gordon, Woody Shaw. So each, each time I started to do certain projects, I learned a little bit more. I learned about the sound, what they're looking for how they want to actually, actual vinyl to sound like. And um, it progressed. Uh, this is 2005, and I'm still doing the same thing. But it's a little bit more sophisticated, and I think it's all even easier now because of digital EQs and digital workstation. You can always undo something if you don't like it. In 1970s, if I made a tape and the client didn't like it, I had to start from scratch again. We got a whole new tape. 15 IPS quarter inch tape or a half inch tape, do new edits, razor blading. I don't use razor blade now, except Michael's cigars. 